Hello, everyone. Oh, we've got a great guest today. Yes, we do. Dr. Kenan Bridges. And he's got a book out that you're going to be blessed by. And rush to the store and get it. School of the Miraculous. And I want to read the subtitle. A Practical, a practical Guide to Walking in Daily Miracles. Amen. How many of you need a miracle? Amen, amen. Amen. And Jonathan Sawyer is with us today from the great First Assembly in Fort Myers. And he's playing and singing for us. He looked beyond my fault and saw my need. So, Amazing grace will always be my song of praise, for it was grace that bought my liberty. I do not know just why he came to love me so he looked beyond my fault and saw my need i shall forever lift my eyes to calvary cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous the grace that caught my falling soul. But he looked beyond my fault and saw my need. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise, for it was grace that bought my liberty. I do not know just why he came to love me so, but he looked beyond my fault and saw my need. I shall forever lift my eyes to cast. How marvelous the grace that caught my falling soul. He looked beyond my fall and saw my need. Yes, he did. He looked beyond. And so every need, thank you, Jesus. You look beyond my fall and saw my Jonathan. Thank you. Oh, we Beautiful. bless you. And now our one of our favorite guests, Keenan Bridges, yes. Doctor 
Bless you, sir. Good to see you again. So bless you, Sister Jane. God bless you. I'm so, I'm so happy to be here. Well, believe me, we're glad you're here. <laughs> this is an amazing book. Yes, amen. Yes. Really stirred people's faith up. Mm -hmm. That's what we need right now. We do, yeah. The School of the Miraculous. Now, you don't have a school for the miraculous, do you? Oh, yeah. Oh, you do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have every, uh, at our church every Tuesday, we have a supernatural school of ministry. So we train people. But, you know, the reason why I say School of the Miraculous in terms of the book is because this is about training everyday people on how to engage heaven and really see the miraculous power of God manifested in their lives. And as you said earlier, you know, when we talk about miracles, it's to, it's to demystify uh, miracles. Miracles are not just something that we see in the gospel accounts that, that the apostles right. would experience. They're not just, you know, these random occurrences that happen that we can't, you know, really gauge at all, but there's something that we can experience every day. You Amen. know, being a believer in the New Testament is miraculous. Yes. The Holy Spirit is miraculous, right? So when we, when we live a spirit-filled life, we live a life of miracles. Amen. And so it's about teaching people how to practically experience the power of God. Amen. Yeah. Well, what was the first miracle you ever saw? Well, this, you ready for this? Yeah. You sure? <laughs> We're ready. Okay. The, the first miracle I experienced was the miracle of salvation. Really? And I believe that's the greatest miracle there is, is yes. being born again. But then we as agree. I begin to, yeah, but then as I begin to sort of uh, grow in my faith and, and my, my walk with God, I begin to see some amazing things. I'm a young teenager in the church and a woman comes to the front row um, and her leg, one of her legs was, was short. And uh, the minister prayed over her, and I literally saw her leg grow out. There was no, uh, you know, manipulation at all. It was just a miracle, the power of God. Um, I've seen people... What did that do to your faith? It took my faith to another level. It took my faith to another level. I remember seeing people uh, who were ill, you know. I I've seen people that had a terminal condition, terminal cancer. In fact, one of my favorite miracles, I was at an Assemblies of God church preaching, and a precious woman came down to the altar, and she had been a missionary. And uh, she had been diagnosed with melanoma on her skin. And as we were praying with her, the Lord spoke to me, and he said, I want you to just decree over her body that she will live and not die. And I did, you know, and when I did that, the, pre the presence of God just came into the room. I mean, it was like, the best way I could describe it is like a blanket of, of bricks. It just, it just fell on us. And wow. she, she fell under the power of God and the person who was supposed to be supporting her, they fell under the power <laughs> of God and everybody's on the ground, right? Huh. And yeah. you just felt a sweet presence. And so she thanked me and said, thanks for praying with me. Well, in 48 hours, all the growths began to fall off of her body uh, yes. supernaturally, and uh, she was totally healed. So, we, I mean, miracles are real. They're oh, very yes. real, and, and God wants us to experience them. Yeah. There's no doubt about Amen. it. Amen. Well, we both experienced great miracles. Yes. Really big miracles. Yes. Why does God want to do miracles for his children? Well, I believe that the Bible is very clear. You know, Mark chapter 16, it talks about the signs that follow the believer. And one of the major purpose of miracles is to demonstrate the power of God's kingdom, mm -hmm. that, that his kingdom is greater than the enemy's kingdom, right? That, that, that the power of darkness is inferior to the power of God. And so that's why he told the disciples to go and heal the sick, to cast out demons. It was to demonstrate that the kingdom of God had come right? Yeah. And he said, when you heal the sick, tell people the kingdom has come to you. Because the kingdom of God, there's no sickness in the kingdom of God. There, right. there are no demons allowed in the kingdom of Amen. God. So when the kingdom of God manifests in a person's life through the miraculous, it is the evidence that the kingdom of God is real. And that that person uh, 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 is, a, is, a, is a recipient of that divine power. 
And so when we do miracles, we're not just trying to impress people for social media. <laughs> we're, we're doing the miraculous to prove and to demonstrate the power of God and to show that that person is invited to experience the kingdom, right? To, to live in the kingdom, to dwell in the kingdom. And so I believe that's one of the main reasons. And the second reason God does miracles in our lives is to show us that he loves us. Yes. It's an act of his love. When yes. Jesus healed the sick, it was because of his love. The Bible says that he would be moved with compassion and he would heal them. You know, Jesus was filled with compassion. He was full of the love of the Father for the people. And he would oftentimes weep when he would see the people suffering, mm. you know. And so miracles demonstrate God's love for us, that he cares about us. You know, he, yeah. he cares about that person being afflicted with cancer. He cares mm. about that person who has pain in their body. He cares about not just your spirit. You know, somebody told me years ago, they said, bless God, Jesus healed us spiritually. He didn't heal us physically. You know, they said that Isaiah 53 wasn't about physical healing. It was about spiritual healing. I said, well, the only problem I have with what you're saying, Jesus physically healed people. <laughs> so if, if this was just about your spirit being healed, he wouldn't have physically healed anybody. But he physically healed people to show us the Father's will, yeah. to show us the Father's heart, to show us the Father's design. And so I believe that it's the same is true for us today. You know, the, the idea that miracles have stopped with the apostles is ridiculous. Yes. It's absolutely unscriptural. There's no biblical support for it. At, at best, people are proof texting to try to prove it out. But, you know, I ask people this, if, if miracles have ceased, how come the devil hasn't ceased? Yes. Demons are still running around, you know, people are still being afflicted in their bodies. That's right. So you're telling me that God stopped working and the devil just kept on going? It doesn't make sense. So we, we want to help people understand that miracles are real and they're for today. Mm. And what was your greatest miracle that you ever saw? Oh, that's, that's really... When you were a young man. That's a, that's, I'm still a young man, brother. Well, hold on, is that a trick question? No, I'm just teasing. Uh, <laughs> but um, I would say um, two, twofold. One would be walking into a hospital room and a man that had a sentence of death, the doctor said he's not going to, to live, he's not going to make it. In fact, as far as they were concerned, he was already on a ventilator and he couldn't, you know, he couldn't breathe on his own. He couldn't even really speak to me when I was in the room, of course. And I walked in the room and I asked him, does he want to live? And he, he, you know, he tried his best to respond. And we began to pray and I, I laid my hands. I said, Father, I take authority over the spirit of death that's trying to take my brother prematurely. And that was it. I walked out of the hospital room. Wow. Well, I got a call about 24 hours later from the wife. And the wife said, we want you to know that they moved him out of MICU and they put him in a regular room. Praise God. Another two hours later, they said they've taken him off of the breathing machine. Now he's breathing on his own. Wow. The next day, I get a phone call from this brother who was supposed to die. And as I picked up the phone, I heard this. Amazing. It was him singing Amazing Grace. Oh, really? That Sunday, he walked in the church. And so, I mean, these things are real. That's a miracle. Real. Another incident was... Actually, it wasn't me directly involved. It was a, a friend of mine that I know, a pastor. And they brought a baby to him uh, in a crusade. They were in Nigeria. And this baby had been dead for, for several days. But the mother refused to give up on the child. And so she brought the child to the, to the, to the, the pastor. And there was a, several pastors there. They didn't know what to do. None of them had seen a resurrection before. And they're trying to figure out, okay, what do we do? And they just began to pray. And as they were praying, the Lord said, worship me. 
And so they sat the baby in the middle of the ground and they gathered around in a circle and they began to worship. And as they worshiped for about six hours straight, true story, six hours straight, all of a sudden, somebody looked down and the baby that was white, I mean, totally white, rigor mortis had already started setting in with the child. And they looked down and the baby started to turn red again. The, the color started coming back in. And then the baby started That's to amazing. like a sneeze or something. And eventually the baby started screaming. And they took that baby up and gave that baby back to his mother oh. and he had come alive again. Praise yeah. God. Well, I thought you were going to tell me the greatest miracle. Salvation. That's it. That's right. <laughs> See, yeah, that's right. And I think that's important to establish yeah. because the greatest miracle was when Jesus got up from the grave. And that made for us a way to the Father. And that's why Jesus said in John 14, it says, let not your heart be troubled. In my Father's house, there are many rooms. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. Right. The scripture also says that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of us. So I tell people, man, if you realize the greatest miracle, which is salvation, every other miracle is easy because that's the most miraculous thing that God can do. Uh, cancer being healed is nothing compared to salvation. You know, a demon coming that's out of right. somebody is nothing compared to salvation. Right. So once we understand that we have received the greatest miracle on the planet Earth, which is the miracle of redemption, then miracles can become commonplace and become easy for us because we know that if God can do that, save an old wretch like me, <laughs> you know, save my, 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 my lost soul, I was dead in sin, and he resurrected me from sin and made me alive in Christ and made me a new creature, according to 2 Corinthians 5:17, mm -hmm. And so that I actually am one with the Father in Christ Jesus. I'm seated with him in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. I'm literally a joint heir with Jesus and an heir of God. I mean, it doesn't get much better well, than that. It does Talk about miraculous. That is supernatural. That, Isn't it that's a miraculous, a, though, how you can be living in sin, drinking, partying yes. the night before, Holy Spirit starts dealing with you yeah. like he did me. Yeah. And then I know I had just walked in the door from work and all of a sudden I'm hearing that I need God, that I can, I can act on that truth I heard yeah. or I can stay in my life of sin. That's Come what on. I heard. Don't wow. ask me how I heard it because I didn't hear it like you're talking. Yeah. But I heard it as clear. Yeah, in your so spirit. Yeah. I did. I did yeah. something I'd never done. I went straight to my knees. Wow. Because I thought... Boy, if I'm going to talk to God, I'm getting on my knees because I've got to be the biggest sinner out there. Right. And so I got on my knees and I didn't even know how to pray. I just said, uh, God, I didn't call him Father. I said, God, that preacher said you wouldn't turn me down. Or I said, Jesus, I think. Jesus, that preacher said you wouldn't turn me down. Hmm. I said, I know I'm a sinner. Come on. And I know I need a Savior. Come on. But I'm asking you now to forgive all that sin and come into my heart. Now, here's the miracle. After that prayer, I didn't want to drink and party anymore. My God. My husband did not like it at the time, not at all. And he didn't like this change, change, change person. Yeah. That, and like, I'm expecting you to go. Everybody's going to go to this nice place to drink and, you know. And I said, well, I'll go. And I went. It's the first time I went to a, a place like that to drink after I got saved. And I was miserable. Mm. First time I was ever miserable, I sat there thinking, I looked around, I thought, it's dark in here. I don't belong here anymore. Wow. So I talked to Jesus, and wow. I got a Coke instead of my gin and tonic with a twist of lime. God is so good. And we've got to take a break. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so we'll be right back. Jonathan has more music.
Jonathan. Beautiful. Well, we've been talking with Keenan Bridges and talking about miraculous things. Yeah. When he got saved, something really miraculous happened. Would you tell us about yeah. it? Yeah, you know, I, I grew up in a situation where I had a lot of uh, extended family members and, and, you know, growing up in the country, people would use a lot of uh, profanity. They would just say real profane things and and as a young man I, I had that I, I had a lot of anger very angry I had I used profanity I had a lot of uh, uh, behavioral problems and when I got born again I told the Lord I said I want you to take this away from me I don't I don't want to be like this this is not um, I know this is not right I know this is not you and supernaturally he took it away from me. In fact, I remember coming to school and people said, what's wrong with you? They asked me, what's, what's wrong with you, man? Did something happen to you? They said, did you get a girlfriend or something over the summer break? I mean, they thought <laughs> something, something has happened to you. You're, you're calm, you're relaxed, you're peaceful. They didn't know that I had, I had got into a new relationship, but it wasn't with a girl, it was with Jesus. And uh, he changed my life. Amen. And then it's funny because 
I tell people, and I've mentioned this before, I think in the past, about divine intelligence. I've really struggled academically, really struggled. And uh, I said, Lord, you said in your word, because like you, I had this hunger for God, hunger for the word. I would go home and read the Bible for hours from school. I would just read for hours and hours and hours, read my Bible and pray, and then I would do my schoolwork. My father used to say, if you keep reading that Bible, you're going to lose your mind. And he was right. I lost that old mind, and I had the mind of Christ. And so I said, Lord, you said in the Bible, because I, I found something in John 17 that said, uh, John 16 and John 17, it said, I'll teach you all things. Well, he didn't say what those things were. So I said, He's Lord. He said all things. So I said, Lord, I, I got a problem with math. I got a problem with <laughs> you know, social studies and, and chemistry. And he began to teach me. And I went, I think that year, because I wasn't supposed to graduate from high school, I went from like a, a one GPA or 1.3 to like a, a 2.5, which was enough to get into oh, college, God. barely. And I got accepted into college. And my first year in college, I was on the honor roll by the end of the first uh, year. Yeah, and that was the first time I had done well in school in my life because it was supernatural. It was a miracle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, you talk a lot in, in this book about the supernatural, yeah. but about the power of the Word of God, too. Yes. And you said speaking the Word every day is a secret it to is. the miraculous. Would you explain that? It is. So when God created the universe, He spoke the world into being, right? The Bible tells us in John chapter 1, it says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was yes. God. The same was in the beginning with Him. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Um, it's, it's interesting when you even break down that word logos, the word logos. Uh, it's a very complex Greek word, but it, it, it also contains in it the idea of um, an active voice, right? So Jesus is the voice of God made flesh. That's why when we see Jesus, we see the Father. Everything the Father intends is fully represented in Jesus. So if you want to know what the Father's will is, look at Jesus because he shows us, Paul says he's the express image of the Godhead. So um, the word beginning actually in that same verse, John 1, is another Greek word, arhi. It means foundations or, or archetype or archaeology. So, so the foundation of the supernatural is the word, right? When you, when you understand that this is the foundation, if you want to experience the miraculous, you have to engross yourself in the word. First of all, you have to know the word because the word is not just a philosophy. The word is a person, right? right. John 8, 32, you'll know the truth and the truth makes you free. The truth is a person. The Word of God is a person. It's not just a thought or an idea. So when you get to know the Word, you are, you are, you are establishing a foundation in the miraculous. And then when you speak the Word, that is, that is unlocking the power of God in your life. Because the Bible says, the Bible says in Hebrews 11:3, it says, through faith, we understand that the world was framed by the Word of God. It was established by the Word of God. So the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So everything in the invisible, everything in the physical or the visible realm was established by the invisible, right? Everything yeah. that we see in the natural was established by the supernatural. So when we speak, hear this, when we speak the Word, we are establishing our world. And I tell people all the time, your words create your world. And that's why you can be in the same church but live in a different world. <laughs> you, yeah. can, you can be a Christian. You can have two Christians. They both go to church, both go to Bible study, but they live in two different worlds. One's always depressed and sad and, and in despair and, 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 you know, woe is me. The other one is seeing victory in their lives. And, it, and it's based off of what they say, what they speak out of their mouth according to the Word of God. Like, we have to know that this is very profound. You know, Jesus, notice a lot of times in the Bible, when Jesus did a miracle, he didn't physically touch people. For example, when you look at the centurion with the servant that was sick, 
He said, don't come into my house. He said, speak the word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus says, oh, man, you, you, Mike, he looked at Peter and he said, you guys don't have any faith compared to this guy. Yeah. Man, what you guys been doing? This, this, I've never seen faith like this speak in all of the Israel. Word only. He said, speak the word only. Wow. And your servant will, and my servant will be healed. That and the Bible happen. said in the same hour, right? Yes. The Bible says that Jesus cast out demons with his word, yes. that it might be fulfilled, which is written of the prophet Isaiah. It says in Psalm 107, he sent his word and healed them. So we have to learn to, to, to cooperate with the word of God. Amen. We have to learn to, to speak what God says, to say what God says. Not what we feel, but what he says. And, yeah. and what he did too. Because yes. in the wilderness, when Satan tempted him three times, he just he what? used the he word. He spoke the word. He spoke the word. He says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by I, every word of God. I yes. was thinking of feeding the 5,000. That's right. He just spoke the word. That's right. And it happened. That's right. Absolutely. And I think, see, this is, it's, it's, it's so simple that we miss it. Do you understand? We, yeah. God sometimes hides himself in simplicity. Think about Jesus, the incarnation of, this, of, of our Savior. He, he was born in a manger. They were looking for a palace. He was in a trough where, where horses feed, right? Nobody was looking for him there because that's how God is sometimes. It's in the simple things that we, we overlook that, that are the secret keys to actually seeing him, him manifest in our lives in a very profound way. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Well, let's talk about identity for yeah. a minute. Okay, I want to read something you said. Uh, you said everything in your life flows from your identity. Yes. Would you explain that? So, so we have to know who we are, right? In Christ. Jesus said in Matthew 16, he says, who do men say that I am? And of course, this was a huge discussion. This was at Caesarea Philippi. And, uh, and ironically, Caesarea, Caesarea Philippi had a temple which they venerated the god Pan. It was a very demonic place filled with pagan sacrifices and all this kind of stuff. That's where Jesus chooses to have this conversation. And he says, who do men say that I am? And, and they said, some say you're Elijah, some say you're one of the prophets, etc." He said, who do you say that I am? And Peter has a revelation. The revelation is you're the Christ, you're the anointed one, you're the Messiah, you're the son of God. And Jesus says, flesh and blood. And it's really, it's kind of, it's kind of a little insult there if you look at it. He says, Peter, you're not smart enough to come up with that on your own. I, this has to be God that shows you this. He says, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. Then he says, upon this rock, he says, you are Peter, and upon this rock will I build my church. Well, we see two things in that passage. We see revelation and identity. So the church is built upon the revelation of who Jesus is. And it is the revelation of who Jesus is that, that causes us to have a revelation of who we are. And when we have a revelation of who we are, we can wield the authority that God has given us. You see, when you recognize you're a child of God, you don't put up with stuff like you used to anymore. I, I'm not yeah. putting up with this. I'm a child of God. My father is the king of the universe. Why would I be here in the, in the pig parlor when my father has a house on the hill? And so identity is key for us releasing the power of God in our lives. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> and I have a confession to make. I needed this book. Friend, you need this book. It is the most encouraging book, and it'll get you back on track if you've lost it, if you have started saying things yeah. because the doctor said it, because your friends are asking what the doctor says. Yeah. You know, I had to repent. I had to repent of not sticking to the word because you know I told you Bob and I are on this program so many times and it's like getting to the word it's the word the word the word and you know this just really stirred me up yeah. to get back wow, and decree awesome. the word and quit listening to um, I guess myself you know clearing my throat and all this this sinus stuff you know just do what I used to do years ago get yeah. decree 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 and not go by the circumstances. That's right. Not go by any of that, but stand. And by the way, Kenan has another book, and this is called Unlocking the Code of the Supernatural. Yes. Thank you so much. 
Tell us a little bit about this real quick before we go. Uh, that's not out yet. No, it is. it's not. It's out. Oh, it is oh, out. Yeah, it's out. Okay. Yeah. So this book is, uh, this is, just quickly. This Hold it up. Okay. Thank you. This book, here, here. Okay. Here. Boom. Hey. <laughs> this book is um, the subtitle, The Secret to God's Power in You. And really, this book talks about what happened to us at the moment of salvation. And it talks about our spiritual DNA. And the Lord started dealing with me about DNA. Every living thing on the planet has a DNA, right? And the DNA is the code for everything that every living thing will be, right? So the DNA of an apple tree is in the seed. The DNA of a, of a wheat field is in the wheat grain, right? That DNA is there. The same, the same way when we get born again, God puts his DNA inside of us. His genes, that's why it says we have been regenerated or regenerated, right? God literally oh, puts his good. spiritual DNA within us and we become new creations. And when we understand what happened when we were born again and who lives in us, it causes us to unlock an infinite reality of his supernatural power in our lives. So mm. that's what this is about. That's and it's good. real practical. I think it'll help a lot of people. Yeah. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. like this school of the super of the miraculous is a practical guide to walking in daily miracles. Yes. Um, you also talk about the glory. Yeah. When you know who you are in Christ, yes. you're speaking the word. Yes. You're wanting the presence. You're determining. You're going to get along with God. Yes. Get in His presence. Will we experience more glory than we ever have? I believe so. In fact, we were we were made for the glory. You know, we oh, I should put it this way: we were remade really? for the glory, because man fell from the glory, and now Jesus came to earth to restore us to fellowship with God, Amen. to bring us to a place where we can actually receive His indwelling presence. So not only can we operate in the glory, but the glory operates in us. Amen. And I believe as we go into these days ahead, Brother Bob, the church needs to understand the glory of God more than ever before. And I believe the church is going to see the glory of God manifest more than ever before. And I'm talking about creative miracles. We do too. I'm talking about God showing up in ways he's never shown up, or, or at least we've never uh, experienced before. I'm talking about us literally seeing heaven manifest in the earth. That's what God's called us to experience. Yes. And I believe that he, he's, he's preparing us for that time, which is now, right? Because I don't know about you, and it may sound crazy, but when they start shutting down borders and flights, and I want to have that Philip passport. You know what the Philip passport is, don't you? Yeah. He, transported. he was transported. He, he, got the, he was first class, you know. And so we need to understand that there are realms in God that he wants to, he wants to pour out on the church. Yes. I, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of church as usual. I, I don't, you know, I've had enough of bedside Baptist and posturpedic yeah. ministry. I want the glory of God. I want people to walk in and feel the presence of God. And I'm going to say this real quick. I was at my church one day by myself setting up something in one of the media rooms and I went outside to my car to get something. And as I went outside, a man was walking by and as he was walking by, he stopped. And I said, why are you stopping? He said, I can't move. I said, what do you mean? He said, I've walked past this church for 20 years, but today I realized that there's something I need from God right now. And I said, do you know Jesus, brother? He said, no. With tears in his eyes, I led him in the prayer of salvation. And That's I call amazing. it glory evangelism. God mm -hmm. literally arrested him through, through an, an encounter with the presence of God. And I believe that that's going to happen all over the world. Amen. And I do too. Yeah. A great mm. awakening. Well, it's Jonathan's awesome. coming back to play and sing. And, and uh, I don't know what the music is, but it's going to be good. <laughs> Stay with us.
Did you know CTN has a Roku channel? That's right, you can now stream CTN content directly to your television without the need for cable or satellite. Simply add our channel to your Roku lineup and you're ready to go. We're streaming 24 hours a day to bring you the quality Christian programming you've come to expect from CTN. Look for CTN on Roku today. Every project is a process. And in his working on us, God has a purpose and plan. His workmanship can be seen in the details of what Jesus has done through us. So walk in his process. Find your purpose.
it doesn't just happen that way. But he has put together classic hymns on the piano. Now, I would say spiritual hymns, not classic. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you what they are. And this is just a portion of them. How mm -hmm. deep the Father's love for me, for us. Rock of Ages, mm -hmm. the love mm -hmm. of God. <clears throat> That's good. When sure the wondrous cross, amazing grace, he didn't leave out anything. And on and on and on, and stops with how great thou art. Wow. If you want God. Okay. To be part of your life, you need to get some good music yeah. and listen to it. We do, I know. We do. We listen to a lot of praise and worship music. It's called Timeless. And Jonathan, that's beautiful. And anointed. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, we've been talking with our dear friend. And, and we didn't want him to end up without talking about fear because we know so many of you are dealing with the spirit of fear. Yeah. Could you talk to our viewers and after you talk about fear, talk about salvation, how to be saved? You know, the Bible says God's not given us a spirit of fear and unfortunately we're, we're living in a time where fear is being pumped into our veins yes. daily through the media, through what we see on, on, on social media. And uh, we have to counter fear with faith, right? right? And I believe that even now, even now, God wants to break the stronghold of fear off of so many people, so many households, so many churches. You know, during this pandemic, our church, we saw the miraculous hand of God. We had people that God protected uh, divinely from COVID-19. We had people that who, who were attacked in their body, a few of them, and they were miraculously healed in Jesus' name. I mean, we, that we, they received prayer one day, the next day they were totally healed. And, and you know what? God is greater than the devil, isn't mm. he? Greater is he that. who lives in us you than he that is in the world. You know your church found the real injection. That's right that will save the whole world. That's right. I, I told my church, I said, make sure you stock up on vitamin C. And the vitamin C I'm talking about is Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm, you know, I love, you know, I love vitamins and, and minerals and all that, and I think we should take them. But, but make sure you're not vitamin C deficient, and that's, that's Jesus. That's right. Make sure you right. have enough Jesus in your life. And I, I really believe that, that God is calling the church to be fearless. We have to stand on the word. We have to be bold. We have to refuse to relent, right? We have to know that, that he's not given us a spirit of fear, but, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so I really believe that God wants to set people free so that they can live the life he's intended for them to live Amen. and not be afraid, not be afraid of a diagnosis, not be afraid of COVID-19, not be afraid of, of, of an evil report or a calamity, but know that the word of God is our foundation and we can stand on the word Amen. no matter what. Amen. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, it is. Well, let's talk about salvation because yeah. we know there are people watching right now. Yeah. And they don't know the Lord Jesus. Right. They can't tell anybody else about anything they experienced right. in their life being so changed because it wasn't changed. Right. Because they just believe there is a God. Right. They know and believe that Jesus is real. Yeah. But they've never ever thought salvation that somebody dying on a cross 2,000 years yeah. ago has anything to do with them getting to go to heaven and being saved. Yeah. So would you explain to people why 
They need a savior. Yeah, you know, Jesus died on the cross not just to get you to God or to get you to heaven, but to get heaven into you. Yes. That's good. Jesus came to establish a relationship between you and the Father. We were dead in trespasses and sins. The Bible says in Romans that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But oh, what a wonderful Savior. Oh, what a wonderful Redeemer that Jesus would go to the cross to become sin for you, to become the curse for you, so you no longer have to live under the curse, but that you could receive the blessing of eternal life. Beloved, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till another time. Now is your time. Just say, Father, forgive me of my sins. I recognize that my lifestyle is not in alignment with, with your will, your word, your plan. I want you to come into my life. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and he was raised from the dead today. Right now, I put my faith and trust in you. Deliver me from fear. Deliver me from bondage. Deliver me from darkness. I make you my Lord and Savior. I repent of all sins, known and unknown. Lord, I'm sorry. I turn from them, and I turn to you as my deliverer. Come into my life. Make me clean. From this day forward, I want to live for you. Friends, if you prayed that prayer, I believe that you're saved. You're born again. If it came from the heart, you're born again. You're on your way to heaven. Don't let the devil condemn you anymore. Keep moving toward God, not away from him. Don't run from him. Run toward him. And your life will never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Oh, I believe that for many people today. Yes. Salvation. Oh, he wants to save you. Thank you, Jesus. He loves you so very, Thank you, Lord. very, very much. Thank you, Jesus. And he wants to do a great work Thank you, Lord Jesus. in your heart and life. Would you accept him today? Would you say, Lord Jesus, come in today and come in to stay? Thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank God. Thank you, Father for all he's doing for us yeah. and all he's going to do for you too as you accept him into your life thank you for watching and we're going to close with a song that's so true he is worthy he is worthy shadows deepen we do but do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through we do do you wish that you could see it all made new we do is all creation groaning and is a new creation coming is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst is it good that we remind ourselves of this Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, 
who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy of this? He is. Does the Father truly love us? And does the Spirit move among us? And does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those He loves? Does our God intend to dwell again with us? He does. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. From every people and tribe, Every nation and tongue, he has made us a kingdom and priest to God to reign with the Son. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Is he worthy of this? He is. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? See what? 